yeast, sugar, or honey. I will say that I feel like um, honey can sometimes make it a drier bread, but it's fine. Um, the best I've found it to work is with just regular granulated sugar, dried milk, um, vegetable shortening, salt, all-purpose flour, and water. So what we're gonna do is take one tablespoon of our yeast and do one tablespoon of yeast and we're gonna add a half a cup of just, we're gonna add a half a cup of room temperature water, okay? And then we're gonna add one tablespoon of sugar to this and we're gonna let it stand about five minutes and let the yeast bloom. So sprinkle that in. Okay, we'll be back in about five minutes and this is what it's gonna look like and once it starts blooming, you'll see it'll get all foamy. Okay, so now that it's nice and foamy, we're gonna go ahead and add two cups of all-purpose flour. I just buy the Walmart brand. There's one and a half, two, and we're gonna reserve a cup. Okay, and then we're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. We're gonna add one heaping tablespoon of dried milk. And we're gonna add two more tablespoons of sugar. Like I said, you can do honey if you really don't wanna use sugar. I've used honey many times. And we're gonna use two tablespoons of vegetable shortening. I've used all kinds of different oils, butters. I just feel like this gives me the best consistency. Now we're just gonna mix this up and we're gonna add some more water. We're gonna add um, about a half a cup to a cup more. Okay, let's go ahead and add that. Go ahead and add another half a cup. So that equals one cup of water. We're gonna mix all this together. Now, when I'm putting this in the bread machine, um, I'll usually just add one, I'll put one full cup of water in it, two and a half cups of the flour, all-purpose flour. But here you go. Now we're gonna let that sit. When we come back, we're gonna go ahead and uh, knead in. I'm gonna set a timer and we're gonna knead in another half a cup to a cup of additional flour. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, start kneading in our flour. I've only added a half a cup here, so that's two and a half cups total. And you just set a timer for about eight minutes. Set a timer for eight minutes. This is the way I started making bread. But then I moved on to a bread machine. My husband bought me a bread machine at Kmart for Christmas. So, um, which I never really used it to make the loaves. I just used it for the dough um, button. So I'll be back. I'm gonna finish kneading this. And then if you want to, if your house is not really warm, you can preheat your oven for just about two or three minutes. Just kind of make it a warm environment 
and turn it off. Turn the oven off after like two minutes, three minutes, and then put your dough in there to rise. I do two separate rises. I do one rise, um, one 30 minute rise in the bowl. And then when I shape it into whatever um, shape I want it to be in, then I'll do another 30 minute rise. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I've made it. We've got a little um, smooth ball. Put this in a warm oven, just a, it's not hot oven, it's a warm oven. And we're gonna let it rise for 30 minutes covered. And then we'll be back to shape it how, whatever shape you wanna put it in. Okay, so I've let it rise the first time and I'm gonna go ahead and make these into crescent shape for breakfast sandwiches. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna try to get a pretty good size crescent rolls. I'll put them back over here because they're going to rise again. I just make like the bun, the small bun um, shape. I have some video of where I'm showing you what I'm talking about. And I make those, the small ones for breakfast sandwiches also. But you can make them larger than that for the for the hamburger buns. So I'm gonna get all these rolled out and I'll show you what they look like before we put them in for the second rise. Okay, so we're gonna let these rise for another 30 minutes and then we ended up getting nine of them. Then I'll show you what they look like right before we put them in the oven. So here they are after they have risen for an hour. I'm gonna put them in the 375 oven for 15 minutes. So here they are out of the oven, 375 for 15 minutes. Now these got done in about uh, 11 minutes. They're on the darker pan. Um, here they are and they're good size for a good breakfast sandwich. There's my hand. So if you were making these for a dinner roll, you know, you could like cut them in half and get 18 instead of nine. And I'm gonna let these cool down. It's also gonna, it's also gonna show you cinnamon rolls made with the same dough. These are the giant ones. They do not dry out. They are still very moist. And I made these um, Saturday. It's now Monday. I keep these for my husband. I just put them in his lunch bucket and he can eat them as a snack. So here is some of the things I make with this one dough. I don't change anything out, just the way I use it. So it's the crescent rolls. These can be for dinner or breakfast sandwiches, cinnamon rolls, and these are wonderful to use like the Hawaiian sweet rolls or dinner rolls or um, like this morning, I used it two different ways. I made my husband a bacon, egg and cheese with it. And then I also sent it for his broccoli and cheese soup in his lunch. It also makes a good pizza crust and it does, makes a really good sliceable bread. This makes the best grilled cheeses. Um, and then there's many other ways. I have a bunch of different recipes on my channel um, with different cinnamon rolls, like the banana fosters, the strawberry, chocolate, and it all is based around this one um, yeast 
dough recipe. And it's super simple and it very forgiving. Big one to make a breakfast sandwich. I'll show you what the inside looks like. It's very soft. Just add bacon and egg. You can add cheese and then you'll just wrap these up. And in the morning, just pop them in the microwave, melt your cheese. You can also add jam in the morning. That's the way Keith likes them um, with this bacon, egg, and cheese. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day.